what's to know. Today we are at the Mrs. Cup Museum. To Tiana wants to know today I am with Will Spencer, the president and CEO of JKS and the owner of the Winston Cup Museum here in Winston Salem. So how did you get all these cars? Well, as my wife would say, I might be a little bit of a hoarder, but as time went on through the the thirty some years that I was involved with with the sponsorship at NASCAR, um, I was able to get retired race cars. So as the cars phased out, we kind of like put them in a warehouse and let them sit. And then I got this brainchild idea in 2003 when RJ Reynolds ceased their Winston Cup sponsorship to open a museum. So I was able to buy this building from the city of Winston-Salem. And from that, we have about 25 cars in the museum all the time. And then we have another 20 some cars that we loan out to different museums all over the world. So it's a, it's a unique space because we can do events and you get to have cars while you eat dinner or, or have a birthday party or do a corporate event. So it's kind of fun to be able to, uh, as I try to tell my wife, Christy, it's art. You know, you girls like art, like shoes, so it's just my shoes. Um, how long did you have all these cars? Some of the cars um, I've had from the mid 80s all the way to, um, to current day. We still find cars that, um, had participated or if they had history in NASCAR and then we celebrate one of those cars uh, you know we try to do a new or change cars or do we kind of a couple times a year we'll have a, a highlighted car um, we did like Kyle Petty's uh, silver bullet car over there we did it last year um, the year before that the Harry Gantz gold banded car so there are cars that um, had a Pacific history to them whether it was with the driver or like the Budweiser pure music car right here it was a special paint scheme for Budweiser and Dale Earnhardt Jr. so it was honestly the first time that Budweiser had had a black car black and red car most of the time they were red so it was specific to, to a race in Richmond Virginia. How many cars did you have at all that you like got? How many? Uh, the museum has about forty some cars. Do you, which car do you like the best? That one. Oh, so that's Davy Alice and the Haviland car, number twenty-eight. So you like that? Okay. Well, we'll definitely have to get you a picture inside that car before you leave. Hmm. Do you want to ask me a question? Well, how long have you been doing your? I want to know. Tiana wants to know. Tiana wants to know TV show. About three years. Three years. And 
what got you inspired to want to have your own TV show? Because, well, my sister did it, and like I thought it was really cool, so I want to do it too. So is your sister still doing it, or did you knock her off the air because you got a bigger following? She she decided to quit to do it, so we got so yeah. Okay, well, yeah, so. It's good your sister started, and that way you followed in her footsteps and then surpassed her. So it's just like a race car on a racetrack. You're number one right now, right? There you go. Are you a race car driver teacher? Well, I, I think to become a race car driver, you have to realistically, you teach yourself. And um, as I always say, when I teach a class or talk about NASCAR, you know, it's basically 43 uh, man and or women, man and women, that put on their helmets, and once they put their helmets on, they pretty much forget that they're, you know, they're in a race car. They kind of get stupid because they go drive 200 miles an hour, and, and they bang and beat on each other to get to the front because you only have one winner. So, have you ever been in a race? I have never competed um, in a uh, sanctioned and body race in my life. But I, I figured out last year that I spent over a year of my life in Daytona Beach, Florida, racing. Do you, would, would you like to be in a race? race um, I do do exhibition races, um, which I'm very fortunate I can do that. Um, and exhibition races, the competition for that is still the same as it would be if you were running a NASCAR track. So it's different. Um, but very much the same. So I call it reverse retirement. So I get to kind of do what I want to do now. What inspired you to collect cars like this? Um, well, my wife says that I got it from my mother, that she likes to collect chairs or furniture, and I like to collect cars. I don't, I don't want to say that I'm a hoarder, but um, I think preserving history and recognizing um, what Reynolds did for 33 years, if I had taken what I had in the warehouse and what I had at work in the building and stuff and disassembled it and had not done a museum, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. So I'm very fortunate to be able to be the caregiver of the history of the 33 years that Winston was the sponsor in NASCAR. What was the first car that you got? Oh, first car that I got, well, boy, I can't really, if I sit here and think about it, I can't really tell you which one was the first. I can tell you some of like there's a Winston Thunderbird back there was one of the first cars that I worked on for for rentals. They had their show car program and the the Winston car out in the front lobby, the Dodge Daytona, uh, was a Goody show car. So those were probably the first two cars that um, I worked on in the '80s. So those two just kind of. Goody's car and Winston car, Winston show car. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Well, now you're gonna make me give my age up. So I've been involved in NASCAR since about 1979. So if you took that and Today, so that's about 40 years. I, so, yeah, I was 19. So, 40 years. Do you know what, who was the first one to win the biggest trophy? Um, the way they did the the sponsorship, you'd run collectively you know 28 to 30 some races it just started out as Reynolds revamped the, the, the they were running 50 to 60 races and when Reynolds became the series sponsor they dropped it down to about 30 races so they came up with the trophy it was called the Winston Cup 
and today it's still called like it was the Winston Cup, then Nextel Cup, then Sprint Cup, and now it's called the Monster Cup. So there's there's been basically in that my my participation there's been there's been four series sponsors. So each sponsor has a different trophy, but Reynolds had a Pacific trophy that was pretty much utilized for about 25 years of their 33 year sponsorship. How can people get in contact with you? You can get contact with the Winston Cup Museum. You can go to the website, winstoncupmuseum.com, and it has an information page as well as information about the museum. Right now the museum's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 10 to 5, and it's open to do events um, seven days a week for special scheduling. And also we do group tours um, Monday, you know, seven days a week whenever requested. Do kids come over here to do the birthday parties? Oh yeah, we do. We've had birthday parties and we've had weddings and corporate events and uh, different, I mean, about every type of event you can think of we've had here at the museum. The museum has an occupancy of 200 and some, and we can see comfortably in the museum 150 people with the cars. So we can set it up and have uh, catering and uh, bar service. So there's a lot of, you know, Kool-Aid, whatever you need, balloons, games. What do you like? What kind of games do you like? We've got everything from Pac-Man to Whack-A-Mole to Skeet Ball, and we do a lot of different, you know, when we do the corporate events, we like set up and do Jenga, and we can do um, Cornhole. So all, all those activities we can do here Limbo. at the museum. Limbo? What's Limbo? Well, you have a stick, and then you have a bin over it. Oh, yeah, we can do that too. We can do that too. Just for you. So when do you want to have your birthday party here? My birthday is uh, January the 17th. Okay, well, you've got some time to plan for January 17th, 2020. How about that? Okay. I'll get you with Christy and she can help you coordinate. Uh, do you have any more questions for me? Well, um, I, I just have one question. Who does your hair? Because it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Huh? My grandma. Your grandma? Where did she learn to do that? You don't know? Do you wear it like that all the time? You do? Keep it braids? Well, it looks really good. Thank and thank you. you for coming to the museum and spending your Saturday with me. And it's awful pretty outside today, so I know we'll I'll go home and do the yard and you'll probably go do another interview, right? Okay. Well thank you again for having me. Well, guys, if any day guys think this video did thumbs up, hit that bell button, and comment what's your favorite car. Bye. Bye.